Right, well the, the effect of the cuts is quite drastic, so it's, we're talking about sort of 65 whole time equivalent staff, so between perhaps 80 and 90 people maybe will be being made redundant and we'll find out about that towards the end of August. Um, but the big issue really is the impact on the young people in Norfolk. Um, the centres are destined to close as well, at least the majority of them, because of the funding cuts um, and obviously because they'd like to let their property go before people. But without the centres and the people to run the centres, the young people have no access to the service. Um, advice is to go into schools and colleges and some training providers um, at the moment, but with the numbers that they're talking about we're going to be left with, there aren't enough to do that either. So it begs the question how young people are going to access the service. And young people have said to us that they're very, very concerned about this. They're really fighting, as you can see, from, you know, from the numbers of them that are here, to keep their service. They had a say in the creation of the service, but had no say in, you know, sort of its decimation, basically. So they're, they're very angry. But basically, if you cut connections out, then what's going to be there for kids between when they when they when they're at school and between when they get a job? Who's going to be there to help them? Uh, the job centre aren't good enough. Um, they need the service there for young people to help them because obviously it's not just jobs; it's their issues in their lives with their family, it's pregnancy, sex. Who's going to be there to educate them on all this sort of stuff? Teenagers, like young people, are the future because they're the ones that are going to be here many years to come. We should be we should be looking at the people that earn so much more. Uh, and give in maybe to pay a little bit more tax at the end of the day. When the services that were there for everyone, obviously they would use them services at one point in their lives, so, so cutting them is going to affect everyone, but it's going to affect the poorer people more because they don't get enough help as it is. Where the rich people and all that, they have their lives and they just don't give a damn about anyone else. As long as they're comfortable, that's all that matters to them. Cuts. They're very, very drastic and the council here have decided to make a bigger cut than it was necessary. Other councils across England have, have had a smaller hit um, and are spreading the, you know, spreading the damage really across the, the range of services um, in order to save some semblance of a service from connections. But not so in Norfolk it seems. It feels very much like it's been targeted. Uh, I'm Chris Gray, 18, from Gorston. Um, connections, uh, when I got kicked out of college, they helped put me back on my feet, sort of thing. Helped give me job opportunities and job shadowing opportunities that I wouldn't have got normally. Uh, they've put me in for qualifications, which would cost a lot of money I don't have, and has just helped my employability overall. Um, all in all, it's just good to know that they're there if I need them. And if they go, it's going to cut a lifeline off that I'm going to need. The concern is that uh, this is just the beginning of a, a death by a million paper cuts. Uh, having said that, uh, we will oppose each paper cut, obviously, logically we have to, but we need to develop a strategy, an overarching strategy that addresses the freight train of paper cuts that's heading our way that will cause us to bleed to death. Now, I'm here today to support the Connections program, but I'm here in a, a larger sense to change the dialogue about what this business of we must cut everything actually means. It's the thin blue line that leads to anarchy if this continues. Good luck, Connections. You're going to need it.